Corona. I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. Um, just want to come and do a quick video for you guys to, you know, kind of ponder on this. Uh, plan on going live tonight, so we'll see how that go. But anyway, first the gospel. It is found in First Corinthians fifteen one through four, and that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification. Jesus always existed. He's the second person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Je Jesus left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived the perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future. What God commands is that we believe this testimony concerning his son, his death, burial, resurrection. Who Jesus is, believe that Jesus died for you and that the payment and the blood shed on the cross was for your sins also okay you believe in what he did and believe he resurrected on the third day i'm gonna tell you this he's alive today you are saved this is god's own promise to us okay all who believe have ever everlasting life now this is what i'm kind of getting at here on this message though so i came across a video today from a seven-day adventist yes a seven-day adventist you know, some people don't really grasp the, like, how deep their doctrine can go if you really stop paying attention. Now, I used to, years ago, when I was into legalism and all kind of stuff, you know, I used to literally be watching Doug Bachelor, you know. I used to listen to their messages and stuff, you know. And then, but I always had an issue with the whole Sabbath you have to keep the Sabbath holy or else. This is the, I mean, I was like, what? So, first of all, they're already wrong in doctrine from that, from our perspective alone. But it gets, it gets worse. So, this particular person, okay, Forerunner Chronicles, I'm going to say the name because you know what? I used to listen to, the, to him, you know, years ago too, you know. But when I seen him, he's still, you know, talking his crazy stuff, you know. And he's very well, like, into Seventh-day Adventist. It's not like a, he's not a, a rookie. That's why I'm mentioning his name. He's like a big name for them over there. So they all know who he is, you know. Um, but this guy right here, he goes and he quotes John 3.16. And this is the first. And I'm like, there it is. So now I see what you guys believe, you know. Because this right here is a problem. Look what it says. He says, so we're going to read John 3, 16. And then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going to paraphrase, paraphrase because I, I don't have the video, you know, playing in here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He says, yeah, see? Yeah, he says, should not perish, not will not perish. And then he says, so, and then of course he goes straight to James 2. First, first, first red flag that anyone that wants to go against eternal security is they jump in James 2. That's the first thing to tell you to shut them the heck up right then and there. I'm not going to avoid instantly. He goes to James 2, of course, say, even the devils believe, you know, this, you know, and then it's not quoting, I think it's James 2, 19 to 20, whatever, you know, I just kind of, I'm like, wow, wow. Of course. So now he's making a case saying that believing the gospel is not enough. And then he says, you have to have, you know, because many people claim that they believe, you know, but let me tell you something, you know, it has to do with it, having a transformative life and reflecting the life of Jesus in a person. It's pretty much you have to walk in holiness and obedience and da, 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 da. all this list that he put in place. I'm like, wow, there goes the false gospel right here. For those who are still on the fence about Seventh-day Adventists, about their gospel, stop listening to these people. These, they're not preaching the true gospel, okay? First of all, anyone who's telling you that you can only worship God on a certain day is obviously, and then using the Sabbath, first of all, the Seventh-day Adventists and Jewish people, okay? They're not Jewish, so I don't know how they came up, but, but all these doctrines of Satan, you know what I'm saying? inspired that's why they keep coming up with new names you know what i'm saying you know you get the mormons you get the Jehovah's witness you know this is all sitting inspired you know yeah yeah a lot of them are deceived you know and i hope that some of them 
actually come to believe the real gospel and not this garbage here, because this is not a gospel that saves, you know, to tell someone that works and faith is what's required for salvation and not faith alone. That is not the gospel, period. So I'm going to say, if someone is teaching that faith plus works is how a person gets saved, then they they have not believed the gospel. And if someone is claiming that a changed life is how you know a person is saved, then they have not believed the gospel either because they are now denying the testimony of those. Because if that was the case, there is no point for Paul to even write about the Corinthian church. He shouldn't. You see, isn't that amazing that the Bible was not man-inspired, but God-inspired? This is why God put everything in the Bible, both the good and the bad. You see what I'm saying? If it was man, men would write everything to be so perfect and law-oriented to where there would be no room for errors at all. But God showed you there are mistakes that man makes. There are errors that people teach. He shows you all that in Scripture. I mean, go from the Old Testament to the New Testament. You know what I'm saying? You find out that with Scripture, God is telling you everything that's happened. Some people don't like the Old Testament. Say, He's telling you what happened. Why are you getting mad at that? What, you want God to just lie and just give you all the all the holy, holy stories? No, he's telling you both the good and the bad because all this stuff took place. So he's letting you know this is what happened, you know, in history, you know. And people getting mad at that, you know, because, you know, they can't believe the Bible would say certain things. But, well, that's how it was back then. And he was telling people this is what happened. This is why God didn't hold anything back, you know, with scriptures. Likewise, in the New Testament, the same thing too. People like to quote James, but people fail to realize that James was not even clear on the gospel. Let's just be honest about that. You know, he was not, and James too has nothing to do with the gospel at all. Nothing. Nothing at all. You know, this his letter was written before Paul. Before Paul got the clarity of the gospel message that he shared with them, said they all got clear because none of them were clear before Paul. None of them were, you know, they were still kind of, you know, you know, yeah, they believe, but they're also trying to, you know, hold on to the law also, you know. This is evident when you start reading scripture and actually uh, look at the time that stuff was written, you know what I'm saying, and also what was going on at that particular moment, you know. Then you find out, wait a minute, you know, there's some things that's not adding up here. Well, yeah, because just because someone believes the gospel doesn't mean that, they're, that they understand everything. They don't. Sometimes that's the progressive part of our scripture where God will eventually reveals certain things. Like, for example, when I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, I believed on him, but I didn't know the details about everything else. You know, that came later, years, okay, over a decade later, you know what I mean, where the understanding came with certain things, you know. So, you know, don't believe this whole thing when people tell you, well, now you believe that's everything, now, now everything has to be like perfect now. That's not it. Everyone is not going to understand everything at the same point. But this right here is blatant false teaching. Telling people that (laughs) salvation is not by faith alone. Okay? Because because here it says, should not and not will not. So if he doesn't say will not, that means there's a chance that they will perish, even though they have believed. So you cannot call Jesus a liar. But let me tell you something that these buffooneries don't understand. Go down to verse 18 on the same John. Look what it says. He that believeth on him, talk about Jesus, is not condemned. Well, if you can perish, then you will be condemned. But if you cannot perish, then you will not. He said, but he that believeth not, he makes a distinction right away, is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So there's two kinds of people in the world. Those who are condemned because of unbelief. And those who are not condemned because they have believed. Simple as that. How do you believe by faith? He told you that. He didn't say believe and have a changed life. Did he now? Believe and be obedient with all the, did, 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 all the details. of the, did, 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 did he say that? On this passage, no. But what they have done is they like to take scripture and they're trying to find words and then take the word and play, you know, rhymer, rhymer. That's what Satan does best. You know what I'm saying? Beguiling with words. 
He's very good at taking words and twisting it. And this is what you see here. Mark and avoid seven day Adventist people, y'all. I'm telling you, this is not, they, they, they can pretend, oh, grace through faith, all they say, but the deeper the doctrine tells you plain, they deny eternal security. How can you not accept eternal life for everyone who believes? When you say, well, yeah, well, this right here actually means this. No, that's not it. Either you believe or you don't believe. Simple as that. And you notice those who like to, I call them workers of iniquity because that's exactly what Jesus called them in Matthew 7. Why? Because Jesus wasn't talking to unbelievers that don't know him. These are the people who claim to know him, but he said, I don't know you. Because you're a worker of iniquity. Why? You're trying to justify yourself before me by your own works. That's what you're doing. So therefore, when Jesus said it is finished, means he did all the work, that doesn't count to you. You think you have something to add to the gospel. Therefore, Jesus is not enough, but you have to help him complete what he already finished. Nice try, bro. Nice try. Anyway, I just want to put this out here. John 3.16 is very clear. Either you believe the gospel or you don't believe the gospel. And you believe the gospel by faith alone. It has absolutely nothing to do with how a person is from the time they believe the gospel. God is one that does the transformation through the Holy Spirit that's in a person. And that takes time to de depend on each person. You're not seeing out here trying to mind people say, yeah, let me see how long it takes you to stop doing all the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Yeah, Mr. Fruit Inspector. Who appointed you? No. You point people to Christ. Christ is where everyone's eyes needs to be on, not on themselves. Because if you're looking at yourself, you will always fail. I mean, that's just guaranteed. Because even Paul made it clear, because in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. He says, when I want to do good, evil is always present. Things I want to do, I don't do it. And things I don't want to do, I find myself doing it. Why? Because of this flesh we have. So these people who think that they are holier than thou, who can do no wrong in this flesh, I'm sorry, your conscience convinced, convicts you and you are guilty. You are coveter by nature. That is not going to change as long as you have this flesh. Believe it or not. Okay? Some people don't take covetousness you know, seriously because they think, I, mean, I have to actually go desire something that this person wants. You know, someone's wife or someone's house. No, there's a bunch of coveting going on, man. You know, you like that new iPhone? Oh, the one you have is not good enough anymore all of a sudden? Oh, man. You like that new shoes? We, all, we are all covetous by nature. That is one sin that you could deny everything else, but that one gets everybody. Everybody. So if you're going to want to talk about Mr. Perfect Obedience and Holiness and this and that, well, guess what? You're using the law to judge yourself, and the law is not there to prove you right. The law is there to show you that you are guilty before it. That's, the law is a judge and a condemner. That's what the law does. The law does not prove anyone. It condemns you. This is why they can sit here and make some idiotic statements like this. Absolutely annoying, you know? But please run from Seventh-day Adventist people, guys. Do not entertain their doctrine. Their animations might look so cool. Do not be suckered into it. Run. You guys have a blessed day. Peace.